Howdy there folks, this is Murray with 3BARD videos, and this right here is Vera on my CSA VZ58 chambered in 7.62x39. Uh, in this video I'm going to be going over what all I did to her to make her look the way she does today. So a few years ago, I decided I wanted to add a new rifle to my collection. I had just successfully finished completing my Drognov clone out of a SVT-40, and I had had a SKS for many years at that point. And I decided it was time to add something to my collection that kind of resembled a semi-automatic AK. So I started looking at different rifle platforms and narrowed it down to three options. I was looking at the Vermont rifles, but deemed that they were just too darn expensive for me at the time and hard to come by. So then that left two options, the VZ58 made by CSA or the CZ858, which is just a little bit more, it's pretty much the same rifle, but the but the 858 is more more in tune with, the, with what the military uses over there in Czech Republic. And I ultimately decided to go with the CSA VZ58. And I can't honestly remember the reason for that. It might have been because at the time the 858s were popular enough that they were hard to come by. And uh, the price had ratcheted its way up to pretty much the price of the CSAs. So one way or another I chose the CSA VZ58. I went to Calgary Shooting Center and bought uh, this rifle brand new for around $1,049 I believe at the time and it came in just the standard stock configuration. I didn't want the M4 stock, I wanted the, the, the standard stock because it had more hardware that I needed. Um, and I knew right off the bat that I was going to be taking it all apart and, and building something more like this. So, I started things out by installing a side rail to the gun. The rail I chose was designed to fit 858 receivers. I noticed right away that I had to make modifications. The first mod I did was adding cutouts so the trigger group pins could be driven out without removing the mount. The next mod was to drill and countersink the mount's front threaded hole so a bolt could pass through the mount and thread into the VZ58's pre-existing receiver hole. I then marked and drilled a hole in the rear portion of the receiver. This would allow a cap screw to pass through from the inside of the receiver and thread into the mount.
result is a perfect SVD style side mount setup that allows for comfortable sight picture. A much needed POSP shell deflector is added later. I then move on to the wood furniture, working from blanks of maple. I decide to start out with the easiest part, the upper handguard. To avoid making the upper handguard super thin in order to install it the conventional check way, I cut the furrows apart, later epoxying them to the wood furniture. The lower handguard comes next. I make multiple rough cuts using the table saw. Sketchy cuts like this eventually inspire me to buy a bandsaw. Lots of fine work is done to make the furrow tabs perfect.
Once proper fitment to the gun is achieved, I move on to the buttstock. An Airsoft AK-47 is used for reference. I decided to mount the buttstock using one long bolt, so a rather critical and straight hole needs to be bored through the wood blank. The bolt then needs to be made. A bolt long enough with the rare 12 by 1 millimeter thread seems impossible to find. So I cut the 12 by 1 millimeter thread off the short check bolt and cut the half inch thread off a long imperial bolt and weld the two together. rough cutting is done. Rough contouring is done with a sanding pad and drill. Final shaping is then done to all the wooden parts. I then decide to make an AK style charging handle. This new 90 degree one will make charging the rifle easier when a scope is mounted. The charging handle is shaped from a shank of a bolt. When finished, it is screwed in along with some JB weld. Work is then started to fit a Bakelite grip. It is made to interlock with the remaining parts of the VZ58 smaller grip plate.
A butt plate is then fitted. plate is marked and later ground to match the outline of the buttstock. The symbolism of Vera's spirit is then engraved into the buttstock. Cold blue is then applied. Final sanding is done. This process thankfully removes remaining tool burns from the wood. A light brown water-based stain is applied. Oil tape is added to the lower handguard to help protect the wood from heat and powder residue. After the stain has cured, multiple layers of true oil is applied to seal and protect the wood. The hardened finish is then buffed with steel wool to the desired amount of shine.
So that right there pretty much concludes everything that I did to this gun. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It was a fun project. I learned a lot of interesting skills and some insight into how to do things in, better in the future. Uh, it definitely resulted in a unique firearm that scratched that AKH pretty good, but uh, my Type 81 that came later definitely does a better job. Um, so, And also, this gun has proved to be an incredibly good performing rifle, so happy all around. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, until next time, take care. Yeah, I'll call in some coyotes later. <laughs>